Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Bitshala BitDev. This time we are covering part two of music two discussion that we had on our last BitDev session. So we talked about how basic SNOR signature works, how it's different from ECDS signature, how it allows us to do various kinds of like new magic that ECDSA doesn't allow. And one of those magic is music signature aggregation. And today we are going to go deeper more into music. We kind of cover only the ground and today we are going to go deeper. So, so we have Saravanan Mani with us with his nice slide and presentation and amazing expertise over the topic. So we are going to get started on that. So Saravanan, um, all to you. Thank you, Raj. Um, hello, everyone. So last time we left in the topic of key cancellation attack, which can happen on a naive approach of key aggregation and signature aggregation uh, if you do something like that. So to, we need to understand what is this key cancellation attack, then we will move into how music can solve this problem, how it actually solves this problem. So the key cancellation attack is actually a very simple one. So as we discussed already, usually a public key is a, just a multiplication of private key and the generator pointer G. So the signer one is P1 is equal to D1 G1, signer two is equal to, uh, signer two P2 is equal to, public key is equal to D2 G, that's it. So, so P1, yeah. P2 becomes our public key and D1, D2 becomes our secret key, right? Those are the private keys. Yeah, yeah. D1, D2 are the secret keys, uh, are the private keys, P1, P2 are public keys. Right, yeah. Okay. So here, the, let's assume that uh, attacker, uh, the signer two is the one who tries to uh, do this attack. So what he can do is, uh, as we already discussed, the key aggregation is one of the steps that we do for uh, any kind of uh, signature aggregation uh, over uh, signatures. So here, let's say um, P1 is a genuine party, P2 is not a genuine one. So what P2 does, when he shares his public key to with P1, he simply takes the P2 and minus P1, just a simple minus operation, but uh, is on top of ECC. So here he, he takes something called the P2 dash and he gives this P2 dash as P2. Uh, the P, the signer one believes that P2 dash is the actual public key of the signer two. So he will, he will naively uh, do the aggregation. Uh, he gets the P. So the public key, the aggregated public key is P here now. So he will use this aggregated public key as part of the key path script in the tap root. Uh, so now what it means is simply P1 is equal to P2 minus P1. So it cancels out P1, uh, P1 minus P, uh, P1 minus P1. So only P is equal to is nothing but just a P2 only. So when the signer can, signer two can easily do uh, use his uh, private key D2 and uh, spend the input from the unspans. That is the original goal of the uh, signer two here to, by doing this attack. So that is the basic idea of this one. Just doing the cancellation of the signer, uh, genuine party signers uh, public keys and make only the uh, public keys of uh, the attacker's public key is left as the aggregated public key. So in that way, he can simply use the private key of the attacker's private key. Then it will easily can spend the inputs. That is a basic idea about this. Now we have to mitigate this problem. That is the idea with the music one comes up with. Now we will actually, now we are actually moving to the music one area. So what music one does here, we, we simply call it as music here. Uh, so the same thing, as we already discussed, we need to do some key aggregation, then the signature aggregation, then the verification, the same process will go, but with a little bit of extra steps to mitigate these kind of problems. So what simply they do is, uh, as we already discussed, music, to, just to give a summary about the music again, music is a just an N of N multisig protocol, just for aggregating the public keys and the signatures over the, uh, on top of the uh, SNOR digital signature algorithm. So it's n of n of n. It's not an m of n. Just to be sure, it is not a threshold multisig protocol like two of three, something like that. Uh, you can only do uh, either two of two or three of three or four of four, whatever it is. The same thing. N of n one is the only possibility that we can do with uh, music uh, protocol here. So that is a basic introduction about that. 
So what it tries to do, uh, simply doing an extra step over here. The step is this. So it's simply uh, adding something called coefficient for every public key, the key, uh, key uh, row key attack, key cancellation, or the key cancellation attack can be mitigated here. Simply, let's say the signer one will take the public key P1 and whatever the public key P2 shared by the uh, signer two and the public key P1 again, the end is going to be the actual the signer's uh, public uh, key here the, at the end. Similarly, C2, the signer two is supposed to do the same, but even if he doesn't do the same, the uh, signer one will do this, this one. Whatever the public key one P1, and public key P2 and the public key P, uh, P2 again. Uh, that is a, a value of this C2. They will simply take the hash of this and simply multiply this hash value with the actual private keys. When it comes to P1 signer, he will do this something like this. In the case of P2 uh, signer, uh, he will do at the same. So let's forget about this now for now. But when they do the actual key aggregation, it is a public operation, right? Anybody can do the key, key aggregation step. So here, simply C1 into P1. That will yield uh, P1 dash. Similarly, for P2 dash, the signer one will take this C2, which he can calculate himself, and uh, in, uh, by multiplying with the P2. Now he has P2 dash. Now he will do the aggregation operation. Now this one is called as P2 uh, P dash. So what is essentially is doing here is it's just taking incorporating all the public keys in a certain order as part of the actual final aggregated public key. It creates a kind of circular dependencies and the equation becomes uh, resistant to the uh, resistant to the key cancellation attack because now the coefficients will even if we, the signer two tries to this p two minus uh, p one uh, here p two minus p one here p two minus p one that will introduce a different coefficients here that will uh, not allow this key cancellation attack uh, from the picture. So the attack is mitigated over here. That is a basic idea about this key aggregation, uh, key cancellation, uh, I mean, avoiding the key cancellation attack in the key aggregation step. That is the uh, first uh, right. introduction so, like, that music tries to do here. Right, just to, just to explain if I understood it correctly. And so what it seems like, so what is happening is like the private key that each of the signers need to use in order to create their public key that will eventually get aggregated is deterministic. So each signer can independently create the coefficients without asking the counterparty because P2 is public, P1 is public. So I like the P1 guy can independently create C1 and C2 both, but, but if the, if the P2 guy tries to cheat on C2, then he has to create another D2, which will not match with the, with the P2 will, dash, right? Because I the P2 will. dash will be like C2 into P2. So P2 is public, C2 is deterministic. So P1 guy can, P1 guy can like independently create P2 dash without asking the P2 guy for anything else other than what's your P2. Yes, I can give some extra uh, explanation over this. Uh, I'm moving to a different screen. Is it visible? Yes, yes. Okay. So finally, uh, it will uh, look I like think, this. I think you can increase the font size a bit. Right. Doesn't control plus work? Let me try. Yeah. Yeah, a bit more. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, good, good enough. Okay, you can ignore the rest of the things. The final one, the one that I am highlighting here, hmm. you can see this is the actual P dash, the final aggregated one. Hmm. Look at this uh, coefficients here, actual the equation, how it is going to look. Right, so and everything is public about this equation. Yes, everything is public. So the coefficient for the first signer is this. If even if the attacker tries to do this key, key cancellation attack, and for the coefficient for the second uh, second signer, which will be calculated by the signer one, will be look will look like this actually because he believes p two minus p one is the actual p two, right? Right. So he will use it here by himself. Hmm. So this is all. Uh, this is what will end up hmm. finally. Hmm. Now, he, as simple mathematics, you cannot do a key cancellation attack here. You can see it intuitively over here. 
Right. Right. I cannot fake my P2. If yeah. I say this is my P2, I have to use that P2 into the second coefficient. Otherwise, the P1 guy going to catch it. Yeah. Right. Makes sense. Okay. So this coefficient will stop uh, from doing this kind of uh, simple arithmetic calculation attack uh, from the picture. Right. That's right. Yeah. right. Hey, sir, well, I think Yash also has a question. But yes. Let's go. Let's go over the question. Both Sisetu and Yash, you guys had a question. Let's take that in. I had two questions. One, like, how does I am not still not clear how does this solve P two minus P one attack, which was possible in the earlier stream that you had shared. The second thing is like, why do we have n of n multi six here and not like m of n? So is it a scheme to test if the person is supplying the right P two, or is it like at the actual implementation of how MACE two is done? So I so can give I a quick answer yeah. for the second one is like the second one is about like how the actual music implementation is done. So it's always like M of N of N, uh, three of three, five of five or something like that. If you want to go to two of three or three of five, you have to use in a music way, you have to use frost or those kind of stuff, those kind of schemes. So it's kind of like, like the limitation of music to itself. And on the first part, Saravanan can explain again. Yeah. Okay. Regarding the first plot, let, let us revisit the key cancellation attack. The key cancellation attack is, uh, is it clear for you, this key cancellation attack, actually what, what is happening over here? Yeah, it's, it's almost clear to me, yeah. yeah okay. I, will, I will try to reiterate it one more time. So key cancellation Or maybe like is... take Yash's question also, if we can answer it together. Yash? Yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, I, yeah I, think, I think this was a very good, uh, this was a very good, uh, call out Raj because my question is uh, regarding exactly this. Uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so are you so this is I think pro probably a dumb question, but I don't know. Uh, if if P1 and P2 are known to everyone, mm -hmm. so can't so can't uh, can't the owner of P1 simply ch check that P is not equal to P2 Mm -hmm. And if it is, then, then, then who knows? I mean, like, like I, um, think, I, I think I get the question. Yeah. 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 Usually that is the case. Everybody knows the public is of the uh, other parties, right? But yeah, the situation that we are talking about here is let's let, uh, let's uh, in a situation where just now we are creating the input script. I don't know the public key of the signer two upfront. Okay, uh, I am the party who is going to create the script over here, input script, the actual taproot script, the taproot address. I, I am the signer one, you are the signer two. So I am going to do, I am going to create the actual taproot script and, and in turn will create the taproot address and uh, then will receive the big, big Bitcoin to that address. That is the role here. Let's assume something like that. Now, what will be my next step? My first step is I will ask you to give hand over your public key, right? Right. right. So yeah. it's like kind you of give like... me an. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I will ask you uh, to give me your public key. Okay. Let's say that you know my public key upfront. That is a possibility that can happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. If if I accidentally share or uh, I naively share with you public because it's a public information, I won't uh, even think about hiding hiding about that. Okay. If yeah. I if I somehow shared you the public my public key to you. And then I'm asking to share your public to public key to me. Then you do this step. Okay, you okay. do this. Uh, yeah, you do this step. I mean, you like it, it, it's possible to attack. Like if you Yash is an attacker and you are in a communication mm -hmm. step, like where you know somebody is interested to create a music with you, they ask yeah. you your public key. Like you ask them their public key and. Uh, mm -hmm. They gave it to you, so now you are inter know that they are interested. So when they are asking for your public right. key, you lie mm -hmm. instead of like being honest about yes. what your public key is, right? And so it's not like the public keys are floating around the internet publicly. So public keys are like derived from XPub. So you are giving everybody a new one that they are asking. So it happens the attack happens at that step where you are giving your public information to somebody who. Mm -hmm. where you know the intention of that guy, you know what he's going to do with that public key. And because you know what he's going to do, you can be clever about it. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. So I think that was like my uh, question from the last session as well. I think I didn't, I forgot to ask it, but yeah, I mean, I could, 
I could that's always share like, that's a good question. That's a good question. It's actually. not actually yeah, I, obvious I, like how it yeah. how that can happen with public keys. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, now I guess can Sitra, we move it, to the another question? Answered your question. Like say to did your question got answered or are you? Yeah, this this was clear to me. Like through some scheme, uh, like it is possible for one of the senders to send p two minus p one as a public key, and so like he will reveal yeah. what uh, some was but the second part which is explained in the second screen uh, is not clear to me okay like how okay. this e equation like um, how this equation how solves it solves okay. that problem like right. this okay. is a solution to that problem right L let's uh, let's go in a different direction for that setu uh, here the original issue is if you do this uh, public key multiplication I mean public key addition naively blindly the issue that we are having is this one, right? This key aggregation happens. So on a high level, what what we can do is, if we find out a way to, uh, sorry, let me go here. Yeah. If you find out a way, let's forget we don't have these steps and all. Let's assume that we don't have these steps and all. If you find out a way to add some additional uh, value over here and modify my original public key, same similarly the public key of the other parties if i do that and if i make that coefficient uh, built with all other public keys all the sinus public keys now i'm introducing some kind of uh, cyclic relationship okay uh, i cannot uh, the person uh, who tries to attack here who needs this information up front and if we have that information up front uh, actually is not the right way to put it let me backtrack one more one moment let, let me so, try it once let me try it once so another way of thinking about it is like you are tweaking the public key with a coefficient that you cannot fake yeah that is a better way to put it yeah so the coefficient is hash of p1 p2 p1 if you say this is my p2 then you have to stick with that p2 otherwise if you do p1 dash minus p2 dash that will not solve the previous equation like it did and like give you a p dash which is equals to p2 dash at the end because you have to like your p2 dash is also committed it's a tweak with c2 with your actual p2 you told me what your actual p2 is the c2 is unfakeable so you cannot fake your p2 dash right and then what happens is like that negative operation is not like working out and anymore in the algebra like, like what is stopping me Achha, okay so what is stopping me from lying my c2 because i can derive what the actual c2 should be and then i can compute that equation p1 dash and p2 dash and check whether like your p2 dash is matching up with my computation or not both the parties exchange c1 c2 as well is, is that what you're c1 saying? c2 is derived like if you look at the equation of c1 c2 both the party knows what c1 c2 should be for p dash to be derived it's a kind of pre-commitment it's a kind of commitment this is called a commitment in cryptography this is like committing to a certain value in a way that you cannot lie about it later on you have already committed to p2 by that hash function over there it wasn't simple just concatenation it was a hash of all these things in a particular very specific order so you are committing that this is gonna be the final output from my p2 doing all this hashing operation and you cannot go later on and reveal another p2 so that's where commitment comes in you commit to a value without revealing in beforehand that you cannot go and change in the future you have to stick to that value so since you have already committed this uh, to me i already have this information with me right in the uh, as a first step so yeah. now you cannot go and make me to change this value you so have to here in this uh, statement somehow... the uh, second guy is saying like p2 minus p1 second guy is faking out right the second guy is yeah. faking out and saying like p2 minus p1 is my public key later yeah. on he cannot go and say like hey that's not my public key p2 is my public key because that will not match with the hash and that will like screw up the whole algebra and you can deterministically verify whether like that guy has the right public key or not okay 
I mean, yeah, it's 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 a bit it's a bit uh, like a pondering kind of situation. You have to ponder mm -hmm. about it a bit, and then it it does make sense though. Like this is how many of the cryptography commitment operations looks like. It's a hash of multiple different things, and those things are usually mm -hmm. public information, which you wanna commit over, and uh, then once committed, then you cannot go back and change that thing, and that's how you guarantee various kind of securities around the protocol. I think we can move on from here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, this is the key aggregation and the problem with the key aggregation, naive key aggregation, and the solution for this uh, one is called this committing all the public keys as a coefficient with all of uh, all of the public keys. So that's the idea, basic idea about this. So this is one problem with the key aggregation. I mean, with the naive approach. Uh, there is another problem. This one, this attack is not something very easy to understand. I, I couldn't understand that uh, problem very clearly. It is very much theoretical uh, and uh, the security proof is not there if we don't do this step. So I will first talk about the solution here because I didn't, I couldn't fully understand this original attack that uh, they are trying to mitigate over here. So I will start with the solution first. So the solution is this. So as we discussed, if we, if we can re refresh our memory, uh, we know that uh, we need this secure nonce and we need to calculate the public nonce from the secure nonce. Similarly, we do for uh, private key to public key, right? That's that K1 into K, uh, K1 into G will yield capital K1. Similarly, for uh, K2 into G will yield capital K2. So this, will, this one will be computed by uh, signer 2, this one will be computed by signer 1 and only signer 1 knows this K1 secure nonce, only signer 2 knows this secure nonce 2. So that is a basic idea. So what here they do is, uh, if we blindly, one party shares their uh, secure nonce with the other party uh, and if they try to do some similar attack, those attacks, it looks like those attacks are something similar to this, if they blindly share the public information with the other party and if the other party manipulates the public information by somehow uh, tampering with your public information then they can do some kind of attacks this particular attack will happen uh, when there is a multiple signing sessions happens between these two signers i don't fully understand what is this attack exactly how this attack exactly works it's too much complicated for me uh, so i will just leave it as it is uh, but to avoid that attack, what they do is uh, in the music one version of uh, is music one solution is this: they simply commit the uh, the simple commit operation. Uh, it means the signer one will calculate the K one capital K one and take the hash of the capital K one and share this uh, hash with the signer two. The same will be done by the signer two with the K one. Uh, sorry, signer one. So both the parties now have the hash of each other's public nonce. Since they have this uh, information upfront before revealing their public nonce with each other, they cannot later do this kind of tampering that they somehow did it over here, right? Uh, but this is not the exact attack that we are talking over there. But the I very mean, nature the of the attack is... Of thing, right, it's the same kind of thing where like K1 is a kind of a public key, K2 is a kind of a public key and those goes into the Snor signature equation and there is a round of communication where they share their nonces to each other. So before they share their nonces, they have to like commit like this is the nonce that I'm gonna share and they cannot change later on and give a different K2 that they were supposed to. And, and it's it's the same kind of thing. Like I remember reading about this attack and it's it's definitely more complicated. Maybe we can share a link for reading list for people to read up on it later on, that will be helpful. And yeah. so it, it, it is, it's a very similar kind of thing. You are committing to actually K1, small K1, like little K1 via this H of big K1. In a way, like theoretically, big K1 is also a commitment of little K1. If you reveal big K1, you cannot go and use a different little K1 later on to like sign for big K1. So big K1 is already a commitment of little K1. And now you are producing another commitment of big K1. So you cannot lie about big K1 later on. So I, I'd like to, just to like uh, add some context over where it, how, how it's happening. But yeah, Saravan yeah. and Katmin. Yeah. 
So that is a very basic idea. Uh, it's a kind of uh, same commitment uh, solution for this kind of attacks. So now we can have a question like, uh, why we didn't do this to, we can use the same solution with the key aggregation also. Instead of doing this, we, can, we could have done the same here, but there are some uh, two, two problems over there. Problem number one is this introduces a new uh, a new interaction, right? New round actually sharing this commitment between each others. So that's a new round during the signing signing session. So that is the first major challenge uh, com com complexity that we add. The another one is in case of public key, there are possibilities that public keys are already known or sometimes as uh, as, uh, Yash asked, uh, sometimes only one party knows the other party's public key first, then the other party knows the other party's public key later. That kind of situation can happen in the in the situation of uh, public keys. But in case of the public nonces, every signing session will yield a new public nonce, right? So it will be a unique to every signing session, every uh, signing uh, uh, rounds. So in that case, uh, the, we can always be sure that uh, K1 and K2 will not be known to each other upfront. So that is one of the reason that we, we don't do this uh, step here because here there are multiple possibilities knowing each other party's public information here only uh, there is no such kind of different kind of situation only simple situation only during the signing each party will know the actual public nonces of each other before that they, they there is no way each other to know the public uh, public nonces they won't share it here that is not the case so that is the reason number two so uh, but the primary reason itself is convincing convincing enough for us that this is a new round which we don't prefer we don't do here here uh, that is completely avoided from the picture so by doing this uh, commitment round uh, this attack that uh, one we initially discussed will be mitigated uh, by simply not allowing to tamper the public nonces of one parties with other parties public nonces so that is the one that is a basic idea here actually this is the actually two steps only difference between the naive uh, key aggregation signature aggregation protocol with music one key aggregation and signature aggregation protocol there is no difference actually uh, there is no actually difference involved uh, uh, rest of the things are already same so we can continue from here but before i am going forward anybody has any question around here I think this part is clear. Like I'm clear to the front, like, okay, we do a commitment of the public nonces. We share the commitment. What do we do next after that? Yeah. So now actually uh, we are done with a uh, few steps like key aggregation step. Then we share uh, key aggregation step can be done by each other parties uh, without depending on each other that is done. Right. Then actually the first round is going to be this during the signing session. The first step is creating the nonces and the sharing the commitment between each other. So that is the first round during the signing protocol. Right. The second round is going to be actual signing involved. So here each other party knows their uh, 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 public nonces. So they yeah, yes, the would like to speak. Uh, yeah, so uh, sorry, I didn't want to distract him, but like, uh, is this deck already shared? I mean, I just want to uh, want to have the deck on hand so so that I can go back and forth in the in the in the slides when uh, when I he's like explaining think something. It was because yeah. yeah. I can't remember all this. You know, like oh, what was that about? Oh, that was about signing. That was about key aggregation. You know, right, like right. Things. That's a that's a good point. And uh, I'm 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 trying to find out in the dev channel. Did we share it last time? I I remember yeah, yeah. it was. You're shared. talking about this presentation, right? This yes, TPD, right? Yeah, yeah, I got, yeah, it. I, I, I got it. I got it. I will post it in the chat. You will also find it in the dev channel. I will, um, I'll, I will, we'll, we'll, we'll like make another round of posting in the dev channel and the general channel, but here it is in the chat. So, yeah, okay, yeah, let's oh, so then, okay. Thanks. Thanks. okay. So, the rest of the steps actually, I'm not going to spend much of the time because the rest of the step is same as we already discussed. So, we can give, go and watch the previous video to understand the rest of the steps. Almost the same, I mean, not almost the same, actually, exactly the same. So, simply aggregate the public nonces, uh, calculate the value E. No, let's go uh, over step two a bit. Let's go over step two a bit. I think that will be important for the next one. So, what we do is we got the commitment, we shared the commitment, and then we reveal K1 and K2 each, with each other. Then everybody yeah, right. goes and then they compute K dash, which is K1 plus K2. And K dash is also small K1 plus small K2 into G. 
and that's like the small k dash into g and small k dash is obviously small k1 plus small k2 but what they do is like then they calculate a e which is a hash of capital k dash p dash which was already calculated and the message that they want to signing over which is usually the transaction so now e is like the thing that goes into the snor signature equation and both of the guys have a common e they have a common kind of like shared secret which is dependent on k1 and k2 can i go back to the equation before yeah which is dependent on k1 and k2 in a way like capital k dash is dependent on k1 plus k2 like big k1 big k2 together becomes capital big k big k dash we already know big p dash we know the message so both then can like deterministically find out what e should be that's the signing step two right yeah. okay now what happens so the signature is same the one that we have uh, the usual so story of signing the s1 story, yeah. They go for yes, K1 one, yes, and ED1 yeah. dash, they go to S2, K2, ED2 dash, and then S dash is S1 plus S2. So the Perfect. final signature is S dash and big K dash. Okay. Which is nothing but this one. Which is nothing but this one. Okay. So the verifiers will only get this value, uh, S dash and K dash. They, he will not know that uh, these two signers involved over here, uh, that is completely hidden from the verifiers. So it can contain any number of arbitrary number of uh, signers, uh, signatures uh, as part of these values. That will be Makes completely sense. Done. Makes sense. So okay. now the signature is calculated, that will be shared. The verification is also the exactly same. No special treatment over here. Uh, we are only discussing about this uh, equation, the, I mean the proof why this equation works. The same, yes. Right. And, and the verifier the will basically do the last part of last line of the equation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. knows the S dash, it knows E, uh, sorry, it knows K dash. It it already knows E, P dash, and G. So it will match the equation and say like, okay, yeah, the signature verifies. Yeah. So if you expand from bottom, it will nothing but uh, the values, will it will end up here. That's yeah, it. yeah, it will end up here. And that equation yes. works out because S dash is S1 plus S2. Yeah, that's a verification uh, operation. The same one, the naive approach, the whatever that we call. Can we look at the naive approach once more and see how it, how, how much it differs from the naive, how much more complex it looks like? No, nothing, not, exactly not nothing much, like exactly no. almost the same. Exactly one. same, exactly. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, that's, I think that, I guess like that's the magic of like snore. Like when you do, you, you can snore, like in snore, you do the signature operation exactly the way you do single signature and multi-signature reduces into a single signature thing. The single pub key, a single signature that validates over a single message over that single aggregated pub key. And that's like the gist of the whole music to drama. Yeah, so to give a summary of this, so it's nothing but using the snore signatures, we just do the normal addition operation with the public keys, with the signatures, that's it. And during verification, the aggregated value only will be verified. Internally, it will inherently verify the, all the individual signatures uh, and the public keys. That's the basic idea about this. But if we do this naively, we will have a couple of issues. One is with the public key aggregation, another one is uh, with uh, public nonsense. To mitigate the public key aggregation issue, uh, they do this, take the coefficient and do this multiplication uh, to uh, stop that attack. To avoid this uh, public nonce uh, issue, public nonce related attacks, they take, they introduce this another round of commitment of the public nonces, then uh, the public nonces will be revealed. So that's it. With the naive approach plus these two coefficient game, that is a old coefficient uh, and the commitment games, that is an actual music group. Nothing more and nothing special. The rest of the things is simple snort. That's it. If right. you understand snort, you can understand the music too very sorry, music protocol very easily. That is the basic idea about it. Right. So music protocol in a way is like all about like how do you add keys, how do you calculate commitments, how do you share the commitment of the secret nonces and um, I'm sorry, public nonces and all these stuff. So it's like it's like best practices of doing music with snort without like shooting yourself in the foot that's it that's it only a couple of two uh couple of uh steps to avoid a couple of attacks are not just couple few attacks they introduce just two uh steps that's it 
cool. rest of the thing is basic intuitive uh, normal arithmetic operations addition subtraction that's it multiplication that is I, a music world music I mean, so like, we you can put it in a way like like congratulations yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's simply some solutions for few attacks right. on top of the whatever that you can easily come up with your, uh, on yourself uh, you don't need to uh, you know understand all this by think by learning from others if you look at, look into this equation and if, if you spend some half an hour you can come up with this by yourself right but if you do that you will miss out those two attacks so to mitigate those attacks those smart people come up with this coefficient solution and uh, commitment solution that's it that's the end of the game right yes fazal fazal you can go ahead Uh, yeah, so it took some time for me to unmute myself. Okay, uh, so my question is, uh, uh, when you're referring to naive approach, you are referring to what is known as music one, and music two has uh, broadly two upgrades. One is that you add uh, the coefficient, and second is that you commit to the public norms. So, is is my understanding correct? Uh, a little bit correction over there. When I'm talking about naive approach, it is uh, the one that we discussed in the last session. It is nothing but the same almost the same without these two steps coefficient and uh, commitment steps rest of the thing is exactly the same that is the one that we call it as naive that is not at all a music the one that we are discussing so far is the music one we haven't discussed the music two yet we so far discussed only music one uh, so that is just an improvement on top of the naive approach so oh, music okay, two does some it. more cool stuffs on top of that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. We will take just uh, two minutes uh, to cover the music two, uh, just to understand it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So far, we discussed Thanks. naive approach on top of that music one. That's it. So the naive naive approach is like what a pen paper script kitty would do with Snort signature. And yeah. if you know how public keys add up, if you know how like the secret nonsense add up. You can you can know how the signatures add up, and you just do the simple naive approach. Simple right. addition without any coefficients. Similarly, uh, simple addition of other the same public keys, and uh, simply add, adding the signatures and verify verification operation is same. This is the one we call it as right. naive approach. Right. So this is the naive approach. So naive approach equation looks same. We are just a bit dumber. And we don't know like there are certain ways like there are these things can go wrong. In music one, we know them, so we are a bit smarter here. Okay, so where do we go from there? Okay, I will directly go to a different slide to cover the music two. I mean, finish the music two, then we will continue the rest of the session. So okay. the music two is simply so far, if you understand correctly, music one has three rounds, right? The commitment sharing round, uh, then non sharing round, public non sharing round, then finally the signature sharing round right okay totally three steps uh, there are and that's not at all desirable uh, when during uh, actual user experience right that's that really a lot of like of talking time. going on talking yeah too much talking uh, we want to avoid that right so to to avoid uh, how especially here the music two protocol creators came up with an idea uh, that will eliminate the first round the commitment round the one that we discussed over here they want to avoid this first round, sharing okay. the commitments. Uh, that, that is their basic idea. Okay. And the way that they come up with, instead of using one nonce, they expect two nonce from each signer. And uh, let's say the signer one will create a small r1 and a small r1, uh, sorry, small r1 dash and a small r1 double dash. Similarly, the signer two will create small r1 dash, so, sorry, small r2 dash and small r2 double dash and they will do the same G in, uh, multiply with the g yeah they will they find the big r ones yeah and big r yeah, the bigger ones and share with the each others okay and they will infuse these two values like this uh if you look into look, look can into you zoom it a bit over there yeah 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 okay so here the uh, signer one let's say this is uh signer one so r1 is going to be or uh, I, I mean the R1 dash, the first one, right? Then the R2 dash, 
uh, and they will use uh, they will he will use the b value the b value is the one that will be first calculated it's nothing but oh, the message okay. the okay. public key the whatever the value that is shared by the other signers and my own uh, public nonsense everything you, you can look at it like in a combine it all the together and create a commitment which is called b B, and yeah. um, the double prime values of the secret nonces are then raised to the power of b yeah mm, okay so, so by doing this i don't know how exactly this solves that uh, issue because we, we didn't even uh, understood or discuss the issue clearly but by adding this extra layer of nonces and doing this kind of additional infusion uh, they mitigate the risk of the other party uh, lying about uh, their tampering with the lying about the their nonsense. Right. That is a okay. high level idea that uh, they do. Okay. So here, just uh, same when they do the public nonce sharing step, they simply share instead of one nonce, they share the two nonces. That's a basic idea. Okay. And then and each one of guy will have an R1 and R2 and R1 will be calculated in a different way. R2 will be calculated in a different way, but they have all the information they need to come up with R1 and R2 on their own. They don't yeah, need each other it. help. And then yes, they yes. will use R1 and R2 as the norms of the signature e equation. And uh, then R1, R2 cannot be lied about. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's what music two is. Nothing else. That's what music two is. Okay. Yeah. So music so two comes with like step. then two round of equation, two round of communication. Share yeah. R one, R two. Share your public keys and um, and then share the signature. So share your public keys happens when. Uh, same uh, similar to uh, public key uh, aggregation step, right? That is not right. the signing step. The actually the oh, okay, okay. That is not part of step. the signing steps. That's like signing give step, me yeah. the public key. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So the signing step is like R one, R two gets calculated. Like R one, R two. This all these two R R's getting passed around, and then signatures getting passed around. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Only two steps. Makes sense. Makes sense to me. I will. I will not like dare to ask how that equation like mitigates that attack. And um, I think uh, like we have like the music two paper pasted in our in our like reading club uh, resource material, and uh, that's where those are explained and those are derived they, like the security proofs and all these kind of things. So anybody want to dig deeper, that's where they should be looking at. So Yash so has a question: What is R one? Um, R one is the first nonce. Right, the so K1. the K1, K2, like it should be called K1. Like here in this picture, it's called R1, but it's basically K1, K2 that we talked about. Right, so R1 is like the nonce of the first person, right? Yeah. So yeah. it'll be R prime and uh, R1 prime, and the second nonce will be R1 double prime, right? Yeah. Yeah, and okay. then they will combine this together and create one single nonce to use in the signature. In the signature calculation, right? Because you don't yeah. need two nonces, you need one nonce. So two nonces will be combined in that way into one nonce, and that nonce will be then used for the signature calculation. So uh, I think the B is the magic that is stopping that attack, I guess, because you can't do an, any R2 minus R1 attack because then the B will change mm -hmm. and then yeah. the R will be yeah. something random, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that so B is, I guess, like magic. where the magic is happening. Yep. Yeah. Um, hi guys, Yash Raj here. Uh, yep. Can you can you uh, back up like the last thirty seconds or so? Because I think I dropped and I and I like rejoined. So in last thirty seconds, we discussed about how uh, music two is different from music one. So in music one, we had like this K1 and K2, and we had this commitment of K1 and K2 round. So we share around the commitment to each other. So they don't lie about K1 and K2 later on. Music two wanted to reduce that communication round and um, didn't want it to have that round in the signature operation because that's a lot of talking. So, and they instead, they do this round, which looks like this picture, this black picture, where each party shares their R1 prime, R2 double prime, R1 double prime, R2 prime, R2 double prime. And they, instead of sharing one nonce, they shared two nonces, like R1s and R2s, 
then each party take each other's r1s and r2s and compute their r1 their ri according to the first equation so ri equals to ri prime into ri double prime raised to the power b and the b is this coefficient that is again another hash of a bunch of data put together and these are all public data and public information so then they derive this r1 and r2 each but each each of the guys will have different r1 and different r2 but nobody can lie about r1 and r2 each other and they don't need each other to calculate r1 and r2 they can calculate themselves if they do this sharing of r1s uh, the primes yeah. right yeah and uh, so quick so quick question what is uh, x bar i don't know how Aggregated what public. is x bar i think that i think aggregated x, public key. i think x bar is the aggregated public key it's that p prime that we have been talking about okay and a uh, second question like you said that this you seek to avoid the round communication i had also read it but like uh, uh, in 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 you seek you you uh, you have a round to exchange the uh, the k1 and k2 uh, sorry the hash yeah. of k1 and k2 yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah. in like music to how is one step reduced so every time like uh, yeah so uh, it's like three steps in music one in you have to have like the like you say shared your public keys and now the signature process started so the first round is share the commitment uh, sharavana can we go to the slide oh that like step one step two right so step 1 was share the commitment step 2 was calculate yeah. the nonces and step 3 was um uh, like uh, sorry step 1 is share the commitment step 2 is share the actual um nonces, nonces. and share step 3 is share the actual signature in music 2 this was three step in music 1 in music 2 we have shared the nonces shared the signatures yeah. the commitment step is not required anymore because of this like this power magic that we did over there okay okay i so think i need given... to read more about this i think i read i need to reread everything actually but yeah, yeah. okay yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so given okay. uh, high level intuition it's almost the same as this uh, coefficient magic that we did with the key aggregation what they are trying to do here is they are making hardening the public nonce relationship with each other they are not letting the uh, they are not uh, leaving the public nonce creation uh, with uh, independently to the other party they just expect two nonces from the other party and i create the two nonces from my side and my nonces and their nonces will be combined and uh, come up with the new nonces so this way this way of adding some coefficiency and combining the public nonces to come up with the actual r1 and the actual r2 uh somehow uh, avoid this uh the problems that uh, we didn't discuss in 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 a way that is a basic idea they just harden uh, the public nonces by connecting one uh, each other and introducing further nonces right so the commitment the way was one way of doing the hardening now they figured mm -hmm. out another smarter way of doing the hardening and that also reduces one step yeah it yeah, uses uh, two nonces instead of one nonces one each party shares two nonces right. that two nonces somehow avoids that uh, uh, you know uh, issue that uh, that was mitigated by the commitment i mean the, okay, the, yeah. the how it avoids that is like written in the music two paper yeah, that's yeah, the music right, two paper yeah. basically got it got it yeah so another dumb question what is r1 and r2 because we are not like referring to r at all so far like with whatever we are calling k1 and k2 was okay okay, okay. public nonces it's just the, the notations k1 are k1 different k1. for this particular equation sometimes it's called oh. k1 sometimes it's called r1 in different books in different literatures it's used differently but it's the same thing okay 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 That's yeah so the, these are the nonces hmm. okay yeah. so that is a music Two completely nothing uh, different from the music one. That is the only thing. Eliminating the commitment round instead of that, uh, introducing two nonces and uh, calculating some coefficients, and uh, that's that's the basic idea. Right, Faisal, go ahead. Yeah, thus far we've seen how how we calculate k and also how we calculate k dash. Right now the nomenclature here has changed. We've changed k to r. Okay, so is is r one dash calculated in the same way? 
as we calculate yeah, same, same, dash same. Exactly and how is uh, r1 will, double dash calculated is exactly the same you will have an r1 like little r1 with g little r1 multiplied with g little r1 dash multiplied with g little r2 dash multiplied with g little r1 double dash multiplied with g little r2 dash multiplied with g i mean like this is common throughout like the whole cryptography area of bitcoin like you you if you these these are all public keys r1 r2 k whatever oh. and um, and and the way to create them is like you have a secret you derive that secret from whatever randomness you want and multiply that secret with the generator point you derive at a, you arrive at a point you call that r1 like the big r1 and big r2 the process looks yeah, exactly so the same behind uh in this one like why do i need to do that why do i so can't i like just like generate two random uh two random numbers oh like side? you need to you need to you need to do, do that because you have to use the diffie hellman um uh, hardness that's that's like the cube like the whole cryptography like relies on the hardness so certain kind of properties like you will not be able to know certain information until at certain point or all these kind of things all this kind of like the signature the digital signature everything relies on the hardness of elliptic curve math and the elliptic curve math is like this simple statement is like if 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 you have big r1 you cannot find out what little r1 is but if, if you know little r1 you can find out what big r1 will be so it's this asymmetry that is the heart of the whole cryptography in general and, so, right and so like and so like is there a point where i need to where i need to prove that i created uh this R like I that is implicit R like R like uh, that gets required. that like if everything we do here via these equations and this maths and all the implicit of that is nobody cheated on anything and everybody can provide their like prove their ownership of certain data right so the like like the way all this math is constructed is implicitly proving that you know the right little r1 in order to come up with the correct r the correct big r1 if you um, have an unique number that's why randomness comes in it has to be unique it's not something somebody can guess then yeah. you prove your ownership via doing the validation uh, validation algorithm over some digital piece of data uh so so uh the way that i understood what you guys explained with the music uh thing so i'm talking about like slide 12 okay slide so 12. i think uh, yeah. yeah so yeah so like uh i think i might be kind of out of my depth here but like my understanding is that the capital k1 and k2 they are they are they are like used to just like do the signature aggregation uh, so uh, right they yeah are like basically yeah. used to do aggregate uh, basically because the verifier will not have that yeah and only yeah. these parties will have that and so later on like like uh, you, you know can, like the verifier will also that have that just generated. just go to the next step just go to the yeah. next slide and yeah. the signature is s dash and k dash right so the verifier whoever is verified the whole bitcoin network is verifying right so everybody is verifying right. the signature so that's public yes. information s dash and k dash yeah but like uh so so basically s dash so basically the signers the each of the parties did not like calculate s dash right so the individually calculated s1 and s2 and they need to prove that they calculated that uh yeah so they based pass around s1 based, and s2 after on, after calculating yes. so everybody gets their right. one guy s1 s2 they pass it around so they yes. calculate together yes. what s dash should look like yeah right and uh, so let me quickly yeah and so my so so the way that i understand it is that like they can like prove that like they only they can calculate s1 s2 because there is k1 and k2 involved in the previous steps exactly. and the verification exactly. and proof yes. and all of that exactly. but like exactly. in, right Good but like in slide number 17 um i like i don't understand how a, a, any of that any of that math is involved why do i need to have a small r1 and small r2 can't i just like uh, 
like can't I just generate two random numbers with the right length and whatever and just do this? I mean, this might even be an invalid question. I don't know. Like, I just thought, hey, uh, what about this? And a bit totally wrong. I'm not sure. I think, like, if I got your answer correctly, it was about like how does this whole equation uh, solves that problem uh, that we have been doing with K1 and K2 and all these stuffs, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was like my that was my first question. The second question was like when you said that R1, R2, etc. are like calculated from uh, little R1s. Yeah. Okay. I think. I think I got it. I think I got it. That's fine. Sorry about yeah. I think yeah no I issues. No issues. Sometimes, but, sometimes uh, like we we get clear more like while <laughs> asking the question, right? And, yeah, and, yeah. And exactly. that's why like that's why we yeah. encourage people to ask questions. There is no stupid question in Bitcoin, right? So yeah. Um yeah. So I, I, I'm, I have yeah. asked a lot of them. That's good. That's good. On like recorded calls for a long time. So you, you have, you have, you have done. You have, you are doing the community and your <laughs> favor. So pat yourself in the back. Uh, <laughs> it's even hard to come up with questions with these things, right? So yeah, Fazel will go before that. Uh, if he asked a question like how to exchange the nonces, I guess it would be uh, on some P2P layer. Can we discuss risk involved in some exchange? Sorry, I'm in a like public space. Okay, that's okay. So he's asking about how the nonces are done, like in the engineering layer. Is it P2P? Is it a server? Or how the communication happen? It's, and it's completely up to uh, uh, the implementation. Let's say in case of Bitgo, uh, we use our uh, JavaScript based SDK in the client side. Mm -hmm. And uh, the backend is our system, our server, which uses some HSM. Mm -hmm. So hardware security model in the back end. So the SDK is just an HTTP client. Uh, the HSM server is just a HTTP server in, in our case. They, it has some abstract layer before that, but that is a basic area. Okay. So you can say HTTP using HTTP protocol, we are sharing this uh, nonsense and the signatures with each other. Yeah. It's up to you. You can even post these messages in Telegram. You can I mean, you can also use Nostra DM also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's up to you. Yeah. Okay, Fazal, you have a question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my question is uh, that the only difference between R1 dash and R1 double dash is that two different random numbers are multiplied with the generator point to reduce them. Yeah. Right. Yes. That's the only difference. The okay. random numbers are different. Okay. Okay, fine. So party one generates two random numbers and multiplies it with the generator point, and party two generates two random numbers exactly. and multiplies them with the generator point. That's how you get R1 dash, R1 double dash, R2 dash, and R2 double dash. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, cool. That was that was a nice round of QA. And yeah. um, anybody had a, another question or else Saravanan, we can move on for the next one. What we have in the plate for next? I, I guess like we I, script few slides over there. I'm curious to see yeah, what's yeah. there. Uh, actually, now I have a suggestion. Uh, we have to, I mean, uh, we can leave it to others because it's almost easy to understand if people already understood the other slides. Uh, mm -hmm. So I can leave it to that. And as you said, if you have only have 15 minutes, we can continue with the implementation Q and A. That is the thing. So, uh, but I will give you the high level introduction over here, what we are exactly doing here. Right. Uh, but if I go in deep, it's only two slides. So what is your suggestion? Okay. So like we go over the high level interview, like introduction of like what these two slides is about, what they're going to learn mm -hmm. if they go through these two slides and then we jump onto the code. Understood. So, okay. So now I'm going back to the first few slides. So if you remember the actual taproot script, it look like look like this. It's using some Merkle tree. So here, this is the output uh, key that we share with the uh, right. share with the world as an address, right? Yeah. So that, that's the basic idea. Here we have an aggregated uh, public keys. The music. The key path spending. Yeah. The path path happy path. Yeah. Right. And this is the script to path spending that we discussed the other day. Right. So now. Uh, we don't want to expose this aggregation also to the outer world because we only want to share this public key, agree, uh, the tweaked output key right. with the world 
so that they can verify by themselves right. and they can send the BTC right. to this, uh, right. this address. That is a basic idea. Right. We want to hide this, hide this. If you are spending from key path, if you right. are spending from the script path, we need to uh, expose this information. There is right. no other way because we have a script over here. But in case of here, we can only share this hash. We can, we, this is an hash. This is an aggregated public key. Using these two information, this one is calculated. Right. Right. So some tweaking, some similar uh, addition, multiplication operation. We so it's it like by tweaking, we simply mean by take whenever you see an hash, that's like a number, like an integer. Whenever you see a public key like user plus bit go, that's a point on the elliptic curve. By tweaking, we just mean multiply the ha multiply the point yes. with the hash number. That's it. Yeah, this is a key. This is a number, integer number. So that will be tweaked here to come up with this one. Exactly. How you have a public tweaking? key, multiply with yeah. that number, rotate like those those public key rotation thing, and you come up with a new public key that like this is part of the taproot protocol, right? So this yes, is right, right. this is not part of music. This is like how exactly. taproot works in general. Yes. So that is uh, yeah, you're right. That's, this is about the taproot. So the verifier will verify this signature. So the signature will contain this aggregated signature plus this hash value. Right. Okay, the, if they are combined here, they can, it, it internally means they are verifying this public key. Right. That's the basic idea. How this is exactly happening, that is the equation that we are discussing here. Okay. It will look exactly the same, uh, almost part of we've seen so far. Right. I'll okay. leave it to the discussion, only this slide. Okay, so somebody can go digger and like look at the wall for half an hour and figure out what it means. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's and, a that's a that's a basic idea. Yeah. Okay. And on sixteenth, we have on the sixteenth slide. That's uh, the same that's thing. Exactly same. How the, the same thing. It's the same okay. How the verification part of this work? Okay. Yeah. Just the message plus the tweaking thing uh, that we've done. That's okay. it. The rest of okay. the thing is same. That's right. Okay. That will end up. So another the, parameter just got added into the equation, and this is yes. what the final equation looks like. Yes. Yes. The actual aggregation key is one public key, sorry, one signature, the other signature, then the public information, the tweak value right. and the uh, message itself. The tweak value is nothing but uh, the aggregated public key uh, and right. the yeah. uh, root of the The root of the part. script tree, basically. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So that's the basic idea here. Cool. Okay. That's clear so far. Um, I We don't have much of a time. So let's, I guess, jump on to the implementation and see how all of that looks like in code. Yeah. Okay. So, so far, whatever we discussed is what was simplified version of music two. Obviously the equations will not uh, look this simpler. Uh, there are some you know, model operations will go over there right. uh, to avoid some things. And uh, yeah, there are, uh, and the public key is 32 byte instead of 33 byte we used to do so far before taproot. So that introduces another uh, bit of code complexity. So, so it's it, it like to... this X only public key mess, right? All over again yes, inside yeah, the yeah, code. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, completely against it. Yeah, uh, that's not <laughs> a worth an effort. It's, yeah. It, it takes, takes a lot of engineering time <laughs> yeah. to, yeah. Yeah. to address yeah. that. Yeah. Not okay. worth it. One bit is, uh, we should have. <laughs> we should have kept that one bit. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we mis is misunderstood the importance of that one bit. Yeah. You know, uh, in, during my development of this project, because of that one bit mess, I spent uh, almost continuous 20 hours to find out about. Oh boy. <laughs> All the codes are simply, you know, random byte arrays, right? That's what this whole yeah, yeah. Code will, I mean, actual runtime will look like. Yeah. So I was not able to figure out where exactly this byte arrays are, uh, you know, getting messed up. I guess, so yeah. I had yeah, to, yeah. Finally, it ended up in, uh, you know, noble, uh, I mean, some cryptographic libraries that is used to for ECC. Yeah. Uh, somebody copy pasted that, uh, they missed something. They over engineered it, they, they over thought it, they customized something that messed up this one bit information uh, in the music. Uh, right. Legend. And then when you like what happens after that is very funny. Like I had this bug yeah. once and I was like, what? Like I, I, I was running a test that was like uh, failing intermittently. It means like it fails in one run, it passes in next run. And what happens like you are expecting an odd public key, but you are deriving an even public key. <laughs> and you don't know and you can't check in because the public key is x only 
right and you, can, yeah. you cannot debug is it easily but like yeah so but once you have the code i guess like that helps like once you have the basic code to handle that situation that always maintain evenness or oddness of the public key then it becomes a bit smoother but yeah but yeah. that's for another yeah. rabbit hole yeah yeah so i will just first uh, overview give an overview about the so first library. thing first where where they can find this library the github link uh, in the same here in the important sorry in the links can can uh, you can you post it in the chat here let me see no i didn't share the link here yeah i will i will post the uh, uh, just link. in the chat over here like in yeah, the yeah, in the yeah. voice chat over video chat over here yeah okay yeah i'll do that yeah music yes It, it's a thing for music, yeah. Just music? No, it is the Google is searching for music. Yeah, I think now it should work. Uh, okay, I will share it later. Okay, okay, uh, we'll do it later. Stuff. We'll do it later. Yeah. So that is the library. Uh, where is this? Yeah, okay. So this is the library. This is music to implementation in JavaScript. Um, so I will first, yeah, here. The order of public key matters. So we have some function for key sorting. Order of public key matters while doing. Can I zoom it up a bit? Things. Can I zoom it up a bit? Yeah, and then we maybe we close the sidebar. Yeah. Better. Yeah, better. Yeah, I will just hydrate over the key the API functions. basic the API yeah, that will be useful. Basically. Yeah. So the obvious one is we have, we need a nonce generation, right? How to generate a nonce, uh, the uh, private nonce, I mean the secure nonce and the public nonce. So there are to improve the securities, uh, we allow to use the user given information and the private key of the, the actual private key, the D value. Okay, we can give that also. And the public keys should be given the public keys uh, of the current, uh, the, the, the party who is going to create the nonce. If I'm going to create my nonce R1 or the K1, I need to provide my P1. That is this P public key that is a mandatory information. And uh, the message and the extra additional um, intro fees that we can give, all this information, some of them are uh, uh, optional. Only the public key is a mandatory one. So using this, the secure nonce will be created and the public nonce uh, will be created. Two secure nonce and the two public nonce will be created and the return, uh, only returning the public nonces to the caller. That is the basic idea about this one. This is the one of the first steps that we need. We are talking about the music too, right? So we need the two secure nonces and two public nonces per sign up. So that is a basic idea. To improve the entropy uh, and uh, in increase the difficulty of cracking the secure nonce, uh, we, uh, the, we we let the caller to pass extra meta information that is related to the signing session, like the actual private key itself, uh, other meta meta information, the message of the, the transaction, those kind of things. That is a one API. And we need to aggregate the nonces, right? Uh, that is one operation that we've seen. Uh, how do we aggregate the nonce, the one that we've seen uh, over here? This operation, we call it as aggregation here. How do we do the aggregation operations? If you provide all the nonces uh, from, uh, from all the signers, that will be aggregated here to return the aggregated uh, K1 value, K, uh, the, right. the K dash value. That is right. a one function here. And then the signing session. As we discussed, the signing session involves two rounds, right? So to keep some relevant information in the memory, like especially the secure nonce, uh, we can uh, have a session and uh, keep that secure nonce by yourself and the signing session will return all the relevant information like the aggregated public nonce, aggregated uh, public keys, uh, which is already uh, key ordered. Uh, these kind of informations will be uh, will be given to the uh, right. okay. public, the aggregated public key, public key, aggregated public nonce and everything. Right. All of these are common to the every signer. Okay. That is why we call it as signing session. That is one thing. And the partial signature. I'm going to be only one signer, right? So I will only call this partial signature. I'm not going to do the complete aggregation signature. Right. I will only care about this partial signature. So my private key, my public nonce, 
and uh, the session key uh, it's it's a kind of you can consider it as a this value right whatever that we got it from right here. right that whatever value. the value that this session needs for all the randomnesses and all the nonces and all the stuffs all, all the, the common information all the common all the common, info. common, inform common information. right this is right. my own information this is common information right and this is just a flag to enable make it this function versatile so that uh, it can verify sign, like it after signing verify, verify that it's correct or not okay yeah correct. by default we will do the verify here okay for okay. that so a uh, verify function that will also the same the signature the public key the public nonce uh, because i'm going to verify my signature right or the one one particular party signature right so i will pass his signature if i'm going to verify the opposite party signature i will use the his signature his public key his public nonce and the, the common information key. okay that's it okay that is the basic idea and the signing aggregation the one that we do the aggregation the final right? step it's a final step yes one plus yes two so right. it will contain the yes one and yes two and the common information that will return the simple yes dash that's it right okay and uh, some extra information that we haven't discussed so far so so far we discussed we only have uh, secure nonces which is getting created uh, randomly right uh, because of this randomness we have some limitations in an application perspective from an application perspective like uh, everybody has to deal with their secure nonce they have to keep their secure nonce safely uh, because it is not something deterministic this is non deterministic if i create a secure nonce if i lose it end of the game i have to restart everything from the beginning uh, the signing session should start from the beginning I, everybody should create their own secure nonce again new secure nonces and everything but this deterministic signing is nothing but out of all the signers the last signer has a privilege to become a, to create as deterministic nonce and deterministic signing what do i mean by this is he doesn't need to create a uh, secure nonce as a non deterministic random value he can pass all the information like his of its private key the aggregated nonces of all other signers except me let's say we have uh, two signers totally i'm the third signer not the last signer so the signer one and the signer two's public nonces aggregated here that is what uh, we call it aggregated other nonces and the public keys of the all the signers including me and you can ignore this information for now this is related to that the tap tweak that we discussed right uh, you can explore on yourself uh, for flexibility we are giving here and the tap transaction message and some extra intro view over here and the same verify that we discussed so right. by doing this uh, by combining my private key and the public nonces of all other signers and uh, all others i mean everybody's public keys i can create uh my own new secure nonce that can be recreated again and again if i have the my private key all other public nonces all other everybody's public keys which is always going to be same till the end of the signing session right right because the same information mm -hmm. so i have a privilege to uh, not store my secure nonce and not retain my secure nonce i can recreate my secure nonce that gives some extra flexibility in case of bitgo situation our backend hsm is not uh, storing the secure nonce uh, for the signing round because during the secure nonce creation round uh, the nonce creation round uh, the secure nonce is created and kept we have to, you have to keep, keep it but if you use a deterministic nonce creation and deterministic signing as a last signer you can you have a privilege to create the secure nonce and share to other parties and you can get rid of your secure nonce from your memory or db whatever it is mm. and during the signing round you can recreate the secure nonce and you can continue with your signing right uh, so you don't have to interact with the hsm module for keeping the nonce around for that time securely you can just throw it away yes. from memory and then recreate it when required in the next round yes yes that is a basic idea that gives some extra flexibilities uh, during the implementation it's also more secured in that way because like you will otherwise either have to like like interface with the hsm or hold the like hot information inside your memory until the next round gets started and that can take yes, some yes. time yes yes that, okay. that, that is uh, one of the serious thing that uh, you can consider so that right. is this deterministic nonce and deterministic signing uh, nothing but uh, just uh, the last signer i have a privilege to uh, get it off with secure nonce and uh, re recreate deterministically. That is a basic idea. Makes sense. So the same the, the deterministic nonce creation and the signing. Right. Uh, this one, yeah. Uh, then, uh, yeah, this is nothing but just a crypto util 
for doing the ECC right. operations. Right. That's it. Right. So if you go with the implementation, uh, there we'll see all the details. All the like, one that we discussed, the math that we the discussed. Maths that, the maths like this is yeah. how the math looks like in code. In code, yeah, that's it. Okay. So key aggregation coefficient, uh, we created a key aggregation coefficient, right? That's the one that, uh, this value is. Right. Uh, yeah, you can ignore the actual key aggregation. After getting the coefficients, you can uh, yeah. get, do the, uh, the, yeah, key coefficient is, is received here. It will be multiplied. That is the same thing. Everything is ECC mm. operation over mm. here. Yeah, yeah. Non-segregation is nothing but uh, just uh, doing that uh, multiplication operation. I mean, addition, addition operations. Then the signing session is just re, uh, recreating all the public information uh, from aggregated nonsense, messages, and public keys. Just written it as a, a common information. Makes that's sense. One, that's it. The implementation of signing verify, it's all the, the same one that we discussed during the math. Right. Uh, this also looks maybe. like a very readable, clean code. So somebody who just gone through our bit dev, read through some like theories about it, they can just simply read through this implementation and understand like how each step is happening where. Yes. This, uh, the, the guy who wrote this code is called is Brandon Black. He was the mm -hmm. uh, engineering manager uh, during this project. Uh, so he created this library during the music to protocol evolution right it was right. evolving so he was working with the actual cryptographers from blockchain team and other teams mm -hmm. so he was the one who came up with this deterministic norms suggestion to the actual cryptographers right. because we bitgo had this situation of bitgo didn't want to deal with the secure nonce in the back end hmm. because of the risk involved hmm. so we he, uh, since all other signers cannot do this deterministic derivation because it involves depending on the secure uh, public nonsense of other parties right. only the final party can do that obviously that so is bitco a, is the final thing. party so bitco bitco just goes ahead and does that yeah that uh, that, that, that was his suggestion so it somehow got into the protocol in itself mm -hmm. you can read it in the bits uh, so rest of the things almost the same uh, not nothing special right looks really cool looks really cool um yeah and uh, I, I, I plan to work on music on some point in future. So it would be really nice to have a reference implementation and, um, and follow from there. Yeah. So thanks um, for all the work to you and the Bitco team and putting um, it out in I public. Think it looks like, yeah, no, I think Raj is here. Okay, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, Raj, you're saying something? So this is Ashraj, and uh, I can see that Raj's bubble there. It it looks like he's maybe saying something. I don't know. Yeah, Raj, uh, we can hear you. I think Sorry, Uday, yeah. Yashraj can't hear us, so yeah. that's he that's the have. problem. He might have prob input problem in his end. So just our last point. We used PSBT here. So far, PSBT doesn't have support to transfer music to information metadata in the PSBT. So we used proprietary keys section of the PSBT to pass this information. You can explore this BitGo.js code where you can find this UTXO PSBT file, mm -hmm. uh, where you can find how we exactly uh, combined uh, the whole PSBT operation with the PSBT thing. Of PSBT, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that is a basic idea. Makes sense. Cool. Um, I don't have any detailed question at this point. Somebody want to ask something? Uh, yeah, Raj. I mean, uh, so the gist is that uh, what Music 2 does is that it reduces one round in which you, you commit the hash of the public nonce. That's what it does, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to commit that's for the nonces anymore. You just send the nonce directly. Okay, so that's the primary difference between music two and music one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, this was a this was a really deep and fun session, and um, yeah, it went deeper and denser than last one, but I think we had more fun on this one, and uh, so.
thank you everybody for joining in. We'll not extend it uh, any farther. And uh, if nobody has any last moment question, uh, then we will wrap up for this week. And um, so uh, the recording as usual, same stream, like recording will be up there in the YouTube and, um, and the notes and discussions and questions is there in our GitHub channel. Uh, Discord is where you follow for all of our ongoing activities. And uh, we have a bunch of things scattered around in different places. We are trying to organize it out. So thanks, everybody, for joining in and asking the questions. That's what makes this session valuable. And we will keep having this session over and over again. So that's it from my side. Uh, thank you, Saravanan, for this effort, for this amazing work, and not only for ourselves, but for the whole community in Bitcoin. And uh, yeah, and uh, we'll let, uh, we are excited to see what you come up with, Nate, what you are working on next, and maybe we can have another bit dev session on that. Sure, yeah. Okay. Thanks, thanks for the opportunity to share this information with the rest of the community. I hope yes, it will be yes, useful. Yes, been for my the... pleasure, been our pleasure. Yeah. And yeah, they, this needed to go out. So thank you, everybody. Uh, see you on the next one.